Alright, hello everybody. Um, this is yet another play Let's Play. Um, this playthrough will be of Bridge number 7, which ships with the Market Garden uh, DLC. This is a day one operation of Market Garden. You're commanding Baker Company, 504th PIR, and you're attacking Bridge number 7. The, hence the, uh, the scenario named Bridge number 7. And this is, this is an interesting mission, you know, Market Garden. Most of the market garden missions are quite rightly Commonwealth missions. Um, this is a fairly small company size engagement. You know, American paratroopers, you get to see their new September TONE, which has dizzying amount of squad firepower compared to June. So I'm really, really excited to play with that because I usually play armored infantry and they have fantastic amounts of armored firepower platoon level firepower but the squads aren't anything anything impressive but in this I'll have a lot more uh, opportunity to use specialized teams but what makes this mission really interesting is unlike my previous one carbide carbide which is only loosely based on events this is based almost 100% off of the testimonial of a uh, captain this is somewhere here I believe it's a captain something with an H but the names of most of the platoon officers are true to life. Um, the scenario actually gives... The scenario briefing is essentially just uh, the, the captain of the company recounting his experience that happened here in reality. So, you know, huge for a history buff like myself. And more importantly, the briefing actually gives me quite a few tips. I know for a fact that Hoyman will not be occupied because in the initial briefing, they don't get contact until the bridge, so I can expect the enemy defense to be far back. That's about it. Uh, if you read the designer's notes, apparently, you get quite a few details on the enemy defense. I'm playing this blind. All I know is that my objectives are to secure the blockhouse and the bridge. Historically, this wasn't done um, from what others tell me until nightfall, so let's see if we can't do a little bit better. I'm basically going to move up in columns of platoons, well spaced out through human, through, uh, human human, uh, halt at this roadblock and then shake out into a company in line, get up some scouts, and see if I can't get early, uh, early contact, bef see the Germans before they see me. It's doubtful, there's quite a bit of open ground, but the road is raised, there's actually irrigation ditches, the ground is slightly lower arcing out towards northeast, so I might be able to move up platoons at a time uh, in good cover. I do have two mortars with uh, moderate amounts of ammunition. More importantly, uh, I have an entire machine gun section from the headquarters company, the battalion. Uh, so, you know, the only A6s are light machine guns, but they're, they're quite potent. And most of them are at veteran. There's one, I believe, that's at cracked. There you go. So, definitely, probably going to be, be the linchpin, because I imagine the blockhouse is going to be swarming with, with enemies, probably machine guns. So just as my lead platoon, my uh, my third platoon, makes it past the town square, I begin to take fire, which the only possible location can be from the the blockhouse, and I actually I actually take a casualty, uh, which is amazing as that's it's almost 700 meters from this the center of town. Um, however, it made me realize that th this building right here, this two-story building right here, would actually make a good observation post. So the plan now is that I know I'm under observation. I could potentially be under fire is to start first off spread spread my lead platoon out make sure every squad has scout teams try and head northeast try and get into tree lines try and get into contact with my mortars more importantly it's time to bring up my my machine gun teams get them into that house and either conduct a reconnaissance by fire or have the the section leader who does have binox uh, start scanning for targets in the meantime, the rest of my platoons are going to find good cover. The tree line will break line of sight. Uh, 
I also have, you know, the houses to help break line of sight. But what I think I'm going to do is I have my first platoons at the tail end of the company. It's going to swing to these group of houses, see if it can't establish a base of fire. It looks like a couple of these houses might actually have line of sight on the blockhouse. At least the upper stories of it. Try and mass some fire on the blockhouses. They can egress if it comes if it, uh, the way they came. Breaking line of sight if it becomes too hot. The second platoon, which is in the center of the column, is going to just stay in cover for now. And uh, if first platoon establishes a good base of fire, they're going to swing out more to the due north, to the left of the road, and try and come up on the blockhouse. Um, the, the bridge is actually slightly raised, there's actually a little dip, so I have, if I, if I rush up, I actually have deflate. Oh, looks like there's, there's barbed wire, okay. Uh, luckily, every paratrooper squad has two demolition uh, breaches, but there's no forge, so I have no choice. It looks like I'm going to have to rush across uh, the bridge, and this blockhouse has no windows, so it's, it's basically a solid object. I'm thinking if, if the blockhouse isn't occupied, I could actually use it as a saving ground to put, you know, fire teams here to put fire down, um, perhaps set up a platoon here and get traversing fire, and then rush assault teams across the bridge, but that's well in the future. For now, I need to get my platoons into a combat formation without taking any further casualties. So after about 10 minutes hop of, uh, of hopping from building to building and trying to break line of sight, I've managed to shake out the company into something approaching a line. Um, the final moves are being made now. Third platoon is at the edge of Hoyman. Squads are using buildings as cover. There's a forward scout team. All I've been able to identify is that there's barbed wire all along the bridge entrance. First platoon is just now finishing out its swing. It's going to have a line running along these buildings and second platoon is going to push through this tree line second platoon has just formed up here the machine gun sections in the building every machine gun team actually has line of sight on the blockhouse um, I've been observing the blockhouse for almost six minutes straight and although like I could clearly see traces coming from it, it hasn't given me any contacts so I'm going to do a recon by fire and third platoon will try and drive straight for the bridge About 15 minutes in now, and uh, my company's now in line. I'm firing the machine guns, I'm making them talk. Uh, two teams are firing in one minute intervals to preserve ammo. I've, I'm taking fire from the blockhouse. I'm not sure why I don't have potential contact with all the spotting I have on it, but uh, without a doubt, I'm taking fire from it. Um, second platoon has moved into this tree line, but they're still taking fire. And I actually take a casualty in its second squad by the end of the turn. However, my first platoon is now deployed in good firing positions. My third platoon hasn't taken any fire, so it's time to do the most dangerous thing you can do with a dismounted company. Cross several hundred meters of open ground. And uh, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to leapfrog in fire teams and just dump fire onto the blockhouse. Now is not the time for saving ammo. My, uh, my first platoon headquarters has been spotting towards the blockhouse for about five minutes now, and underneath the tree line, it's actually gotten, it's actually spotted a trench. Now, we don't see any movement in it, we haven't gotten any definitive contact, but, well, 
trench lines are rarely unoccupied. So we're going to keep observation. The first platoon headquarters is in an excellent position. It's the platoon, the light machine gun teams of the squads are deploying. One of my squads is in skirmish line. It's got good line of sight. It's within rifle range, finally. Uh, the mortar team has deployed. So if we get definitive contact in and around those trench lines, I'm going to start delivering 60 mil onto it. This should keep whatever is in that tree line and whatever is in that trench line we should keep their heads down long enough for a second platoon to hopefully get into death laid. Um, oh, the blockhouse unfortunately has complete line of sight here so second platoon will have to get if it gets into this tree line second platoon will be in a good position and as I stated at the beginning of the turn uh, at the beginning of the battle rather the road on the northeast side is raised, so this is all dead ground. I'm going to try and maneuver third platoon, as you can see here. Thankfully, they haven't taken any further casualties since their first contact. And they're going to maneuver towards this little raised berm here. And then we'll get to destroying this barbed wire and hopefully assaulting across. Time to use smoke and time to see what paratroopers can do. So while this rate and level of fire is very impressive, it's by no means sustainable, and I'm not really taking much uh, incoming fire anymore. My second platoon is moving forward in balance here, as you can see the, the, the evenly spaced and moving forward towards that blade. Third platoon hasn't taken any fire. Uh, I need to speed this up, because the first platoon and machine gun sections will burn through their ammo very quickly, uh, trying to keep up this, this heaviness of fire. Third platoon's uh, path of approach is completely out of line of sight of any enemy defensive positions, so to help them with their assault, I'm already moving forward the machine gun platoon, or elements of the machine gun platoon, and I'm probably going to move with the company headquarters as well, as there's quite a few rifles to go around in the company headquarters, and having screaming distance to the captain will probably help. Okay, so this is a very important turn for me, because this turn, um, I actually start getting firm contact reports. So the trench is occupied, uh, quite naturally. This mortar is now firing at that potential contact over open sites. Uh, first platoon's mortar is dialing in with the lieutenant uh, in the house guiding it. And second platoon's lead squad uh, is actually going to get definitive contact on machine guns and enemy infantry and now it can actually put down targeted direct fire and get something going here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up this machine gun section to second platoon to bolster their firepower and second platoon is going to provide yet another base of fire for third. We're going to blow the barbed wire and see if we can't use the pump house to get across the bridge quickly.
So we're reaching the halfway point here of, uh, of this scenario. And despite sporadic casualties, um, I think there's been about at least one to two casualties per platoon from long range fire from the blockhouse. But despite that, um, everybody's in position. Everybody's where they should be. A second platoon's relatively spread out. There's one fire team acting as a demo group. Um, we've blown several holes in the wire, which will now allow for third platoon, which has broken up into an assault team led by headquarters, to hug the deflated area. This is all deflated. To hug it, get up to the blockhouse or the pump house rather, and then hopefully take the trench and the blockhouse in close attack. Um, to support that, company headquarters plus a machine gun or two machine gun sections um, are going to form a skirmishing line in addition to what's left of 3rd platoon and get traversing fire hopefully on the trench. I'm not sure what my line of sight will be from this area but I should be able to cover the corner of the pump house quite well.
So uh, after a several minute firefight, my first two attempts to take the blockhouse result in several casualties. After rushing up the machine guns across the bridge, rushing up the rest of the 3rd platoon, the enemy begin to panic and they break and run from the house. I'm able to take the 1st sergeant and a bazooka team, uh, run them along the riverbank, and they get slaughtered basically as they, they exit the building. And as, as I'm sitting there watching, you know, all the Germans get cut down, the AI surrender and I'm given a total victory. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how many turns this took. It's an hour long mission and I actually have only 13 minutes left. It's a, it was a deceptively difficult mission. It turns out I was only fighting uh, Securings units, so the heavy machine gun platoon in the blockhouse were the only machine guns they had, you know, was rifles, not well motivated. But, you know, from the blockhouse to my starting position is a considerable distance and it's not a lot of cover. Um, second platoon could have gone chewed up a lot more than they did. Third platoon took basically all, his, all of its casualties taking this trench line. So it's it was 45 minutes a century of me dodging machine gun fire. It was actually an incredibly difficult mission. Far more difficult in my opinion than carbide carbide. Uh, even though, you know, at the squad level, I got to play with a lot of casualty, uh, a lot of, well, casualties, excuse me. I got to play with a lot of weaponry, weaponry I don't usually get in the earlier scenarios for America, but yeah, difficult mission, excellent, excellent looking map, very, very, uh, very beautiful looking map, very good concept for a mission.